related and macabre collection of short stories is called Angry Candy from the region between one of the uh, better offerings I think in a book uh, filled with better offerings uh, Here's one line, death came as merely a hyphen, life, and the balance of the statement followed instantly, for it was only when Bailey died that he began to live. I'll let you ponder that as we ask uh, Harlan Ellison a little bit about what he learned about death from uh, compiling this uh, collection of works in Angry Candy. Are you better able now, should another friend or acquaintance or relative pass away, are you better equipped to handle that? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, and the startling thing that I keep finding is people are writing me now. The book's been out about a week, and, uh, and I'm getting letters already from people saying, uh, thank you, this book has, has helped. A, a woman uh, called me uh, and, and, and said her father was dying in the next room, and she was sitting the death watch, and she had bought my book and didn't know what it was about, but wanted to, she was, she was a reader of mine, and, uh, and the book somehow helped get her through it. The thing that I learned, and, and I... And I, and I, 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 I Death was, has never been a stranger. I mean, my own father died when I was 14 years old. He, he died right in front of me on a Sunday morning. He had a heart attack uh, and, uh, and, and died. There was nothing I could do. I, I, was, I was just a kid. And, and, and there was a bi there's a big difference between, between that, uh, a lone single death, no matter how debilitating, no matter how uh, crushing and, and significant that death is, because you, you, you at least have the time to concentrate on it, however long it takes you. Uh, but when your friends are dying, when people are dying one, two, three, a week, uh, and it was that's the way it was happening. It was as if it was as if the slaughter machine had just run over time. Every time the phone rang, I trembled for fear that I would I'd pick it up and someone would say, "Guess who's who's dead?" And and these were all people who had been bits and pieces of my past. They held within them the memories of who I had been. And when they passed things that had happened to me were, were nothing more than stories. If I would tell a story, I had no one to verify it because that, that validating person was gone. Uh, the, the, the emptiness you feel when, when someone you, 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 you can talk to, you turn around to say something to them only that they would only understand, and they're not there. There's a vacuum there. And the sadness and the misery and the unhappiness are so overwhelming that you want to scream. You want to yell at the universe. You know the universe doesn't care. The universe is insensate. It has no mind. It is neither malign nor benign. It's just there. And yet you want to scream, this is not fair. This is, this is not right. There's something wrong here. And everywhere you go with that, whether it's at the funeral service or among your friends, everyone tries to soften and dull the, a the edges of your passion. They try to make you proper, uh, to make you contrite. Oh, no, they've gone to a better place. Oh, uh, don't, don't cry, don't cry. They keep saying, don't cry, don't cry. And the message of that is, don't cry. And so you get angry. Inside, the love that you had for these people is bottled up because you're not allowed to be angry about them being gone. And that's what the title Angry Candy means. Uh, the candy part is love, and the anger is the fury that you feel that no one will let, you know, the, the ministers and, and, the, and the pallbearers and all the friends, they all say, oh, no, no, everything will be fine. They've gone to a better place. Well, that's horse pucky. Whether they're gone to a better place or not, they're gone. They're worm food. They're dead. Candy. And as we were talking a moment ago about this thing you do of writing in store windows on occasional uh, bases while interrupted and while putting the pages up on the window for people to look at and stare over your shoulder quite literally. I would suspect, number one, you have immense powers of concentration, and number two, you are a one-take, no-edit type of writer. Am I correct? Boy, you got it dead on. Uh, <clears throat> when I'm when I'm in the world of the story, uh, I'm in that world, and uh, very little can disturb me. Uh, but when I, for instance, when I'm at home working, even in my own office, I play music very loud while I'm while I'm working. Usually, Ennio Morricone film scores from spaghetti westerns. <laughs> And uh, uh, I think I think writing is the most pleasurable thing in the world to do, and 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 I and I just enjoy doing. It. I'm always very uh, short with writers who tell me what anguish it is to write, how they bleed out of the page, and oh, it's awful, it's awful. And I say, well, then, then quit and go to a chain gang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're Mr. One Take. You don't. You do not go back and second guess yesterday's writing. Well, I, I no. I usually don't have to. I. Uh, it usually comes out right the first time, which which I don't mean to sound arrogant. I mean every writer writes in a different way, and and no one way is better than any other. Uh, there are people who do endless rewrites, and 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 their writing is of a kind. And and I try not to set anything down unless it's ordered in my mind. I go on sort of an automatic writing 